Morning everyone. Okay, quick video today. We have Windows Server 2022 and we want to upgrade to Windows Server 2025. Let's go see what that looks like and get straight into a demo. So I've got some Hyper-V here. Let's go and create a couple of new virtual machines running Windows Server 2022. Uh, new virtual machine. Next, let's do this for uh, Server 1. And we'll leave this as generation two, start at memory four gig, that's fine. Connect it straight to the default switch, that's cool too. Server one, install an operating system later, cool. Let's go and create another one. Let's do a server two. All right. Same thing, generation two. Next on that one, 4 gig of RAM, connect it to my default switch. Next on that one, create a virtual hard disk and install an OS later. Wonderful. So let's go back into Server 1, settings on this one. And what we're going to do is we're going to install Windows Server 2022 to start with, and then we're going to go and upgrade this. So if I just drop over here uh, into my SCSI controller, let's add a DVD drive to this. And we'll go and grab an image file. And I should have in my downloads here a Windows Server 2022 image. Let's go and change around the boot order as well. So let's apply that. Change that boot order up. And we'll go do the same thing for Server 2. We'll just come over in here, SCSI controller, DVD drive, add one of those things in. Image file, browse, Windows Server 2022. Apply that back to the boot order, move that boot order up. So let's go start Windows Server 1, start that up, whack the any key, got to remember the any key, and we'll start Server 2, and we will go and whack the any key to boot from the disk. Great, so we should have both machines ready to rock. So let's just stick with English United States, that'll be fine, and we'll just do an install now. Cool. So let's wait for both of these machines to install. And once they are, we can drop back into them. Oops, I just want to say I don't have a product key for the moment. Let's go install, uh, yeah, let's do Server 2022 standard desktop experience on both of these things. And I'll accept the license terms because, of course, I've read that in detail in the past. I'm sure you believe me. There we go. Right, so let's wait for these two machines to install, and once they are, then we can carry on and upgrade them to Windows Server 2025 and see what that process kind of looks like. And what I think I might do is actually install a couple of extra bits and bobs on these machines too, uh, just to prove to you that things will work after an upgrade. Okay, so we'll get back to that in a moment. Okay, let's just go set a couple of passwords here for the administrator account. Use my super secure password. Cool. And let's go log straight in. If we jump in here to server two, and we jump in here. So we're now in to server one and server two. Let's go check some IP addresses, see what we've got. And to check we're all kind of up and running. That's cool. That's cool. So we've got 211.190 and 219.46. Uh, let's add some things to these machines. First of all, let's take this Server 2 machine and let's install IIS and let's take Server 1 machine and let's install a domain controller. So I'm going to add roles and features on Server 2 and we're going to just add an IIS web server to this. That's cool. And let's go into this one, Server 1. And let's go through and make this a domain controller. Let's go to Active Directory um, Domain Services, ADDS in here. Add those in, next on that one, next on that one, and install that. So let's wait for these two things to install, and then we'll get back to it. And because that browser is Edge, it needs to give you a bit of a song and dance about it before it actually lets you use it. So let's go to 127.0.0.1. And we have the IIS start page to show us that the internet information services is running. Okay, so this one has installed our um, domain services, but what we need to do is to promote this server to a domain controller. Okay, so let's just add in our directory services restore mode password here. Something you definitely don't want to lose. 
Uh, we'll leave this function level at 2016, that's fine. Uh, we don't want to do DNS delegation. We're just going to go next on this and we're just going to install Active Directory just to then upgrade it to 2025 to show that it works nicely. Okay, so now we have a domain controller. Let's go log into that. And let's go and get my server2 joined to that server1 domain. So to do this, I'm just going to go and change around some IP addresses uh, just to make sure these are on a local network. All right, so we're now logged into both. Let's go to tools. Let's go to Active Directory users and computers. And let's go and have a look at IIS and just double check both of these things on both sides before we get going. Yes, I have a domain controller running and I have my server two running IIS over here. And my computers should both be registered. I've got server two running as a standard server and I've got server one running as a DC. So let's upgrade server two first. So over here, I'm just going to drop into the settings for server two and I am going to change around this DVD disk from a Windows Server 2022 to a Windows Server 2025. Open that up and we're just gonna run setup.exe and we'll begin the process of installing Windows Server 2025, very easy. Uh, yeah, let's make the installation better. You don't have any connection to the internet, so this is going to have a bit of a moan for checking updates, but either way, it's still going to install Server 2025 for me. So let's just wait for that to complete. So now it's finished checking for updates. I'm just going to choose I previously installed Windows Server on this PC so I can install it, and we're going to install Windows Server 2025 standard desktop experience. And it's gonna do some more checks and it's going to start performing the upgrade. Okay, I'm going to accept all the notices and license terms, and we're going to keep all files, settings, and applications because we don't want anything to actually change. All right, so now we're ready to actually install, and uh, let's just click that Install button and wait for Windows Server 2025 to install. Once this is done, we'll just check that IIS is still working, and we'll move on to the domain controller. All right. So we're now upgraded to Windows Server 2022. Login screen looks a little bit different, but let's just log in and check that our IIS server is actually still working. So server manager is still there for us, but there's a little bit of a design change. Looks a little bit like Windows 11 now, rather than Windows 10, which is fine. Um, and let's go and bounce up edge and see if we can actually go and connect to IIS. The other thing I want to do is I just want to check that I'm also still connected to my domain and nothing has changed there. So let's run a command prompt. And let's do a quick who am I? And you can see I'm still Contoso backslash administrator, which is great. And if I do an IP config slash all, uh, we'll see that I'm connected to here, contoso.com as my primary DNS suffixes. Awesome, so that's still working. And let's see if that IIS service has automatically started. Yep, that's still running, great. So that's the member server done. Let's do the domain controller. So let's see if there's any differences when actually upgrading a domain controller from Windows Server 2022 to 2025. I'm gonna do the same process. We're gonna go and load in um, the DVD here for Windows Server 2025. I'm going to apply that and we're going to literally just run setup.exe here. So just checking out the what's new on Windows Server 2025, there is quite a bunch of stuff that's been changed on Active Directory Domain Services. They've increased the database size, which is cool. Um, they've added some things like AD object repair inside here, uh, and they've actually changed around the forest and domain functional levels. The new functional level is used for general support and is required for the new 32K base size. So this is gonna take us to domain functional level 10 and forest functional level 10 as well. Microsoft has no plans to retrofit functional levels for 2019 and 2022. So it's basically going straight from 2016 all the way up here to server 2025. So we'll go and actually perform that uh, after we've installed this here onto our server and upgraded to Windows Server 2025. Okay then guys, so for our domain controller, we do need to run one extra little thing before we get started and that's called the AD prep tool. So here on the DVD, you'll find uh, we have the Windows Server 2025 DVD. Here's the AD prep folder and the AD prep tool. So let's just pop over to that directory here. So that's D support AD prep. And what we're going to do is we're going to run a command called AD prep forward slash 
forest prep. Okay, so let's just go and confirm that by pressing C and enter. And this is going to run our AD prep tool ready for our upgrade. That's cool. So I also want to run AD prep domain prep as well on here. And that's going to successfully update that domain wide information. So now we should be able to go back to our DVD drive here, go back to our setup procedure and continue where I left off. Okay, let's get ready to install and whack that install button. Okay, so that's now rebooted. Let's go and log back into our domain controller and check that everything is still functional. Okay, so we've logged back in now into our Windows Server 2025 box and let's go and check on our Active Directory users and computers. Make sure everything's still there and still working. Wonderful, it is, and we can see there's nothing that has to be really changed here for this to work. But if we want to make use of some of the new features, we do need to actually go and upgrade um, our schema. So if I drop here into Domains and Trusts, I could raise the domain functional level over here, and I can raise this to Windows Server 2025. It's currently on Server 2016. There wasn't actually an increased functional level for 2020, no, sorry, for 2019 or for 2022. So let's go and raise that functional level. And that's done. That's it. It's that quick. So what we have installed now is Windows Server 2025 on both of these servers, on a member server and on a domain controller. And you can see the process of upgrading here. It's not really much change that we actually have to make to our environment. We just have to remember before we're doing it on our domain controllers, run that AD prep utility. Um, otherwise, the installation, the upgrade won't actually work. And that's it. That's upgrading Windows Server 2022 to Windows Server 2025. Hope you enjoyed that and you'll join me next time for some more Windows Server tutorials. And you know the routine, hashtag like and subscribe. And I hope you enjoyed this video and will join me next time. Goodbye.